Welcome to one of the most interesting videos I will be making probably in my life. Welcome to a Diary of a Wimpy Kid ASMR reading video. It will just be a nice video just about Diary of a Wimpy Kid and just put this in so I don't get like super sued for something silly but this is not my book the author is Jeff Kinney and I really hope you guys enjoy this video let's begin ah yes just the color blue don't mind the radiator in the background if you can hear that apologies if you do and right off the bat, almost like a sign, it's the moldy cheese. The cheese touch right as we flip this page, the radiator turns on. Don't know if that's a sign, but can't really do much about it. So here we go. Diary of Wimpy Kid, Jeff Halfway's Journal by Jeff Kinney. Everything in the house has decided to turn on at this very moment. Beautiful. To mom, dad, re, Scott, and Patrick. September, Tuesday. First of all, let me get something straight. This is a journal, not a diary. I know what it says on the cover, but when my mom went out to buy this thing, I specifically told her to get one that didn't say diary on it. Great. All I need is for some jerk to catch me carrying this book around and get the wrong idea. Sissy punch sound effect. The other thing I want to clear up right away is that my that this was my mom's idea, not mine. But if she thinks I'm going to write down my feelings in here or whatever, she's crazy. So just don't expect me to be all dear diary and this dear diary that. The only reason I agreed to do this at all is because I figured later on when I'm rich and famous, I'll have better things to do than answer people's stupid questions all day long. So this book is going to come in handy. Gregory, tell us about your childhood. Were you always so smart and handsome? Here's my journal. Now shoo shoo. Flash sound effect. Like I said, I'll be famous one day. But for now, I'm stuck in middle school with a bunch of morons. I don't know, that sounds pretty mean to me. Let me just say for the record that I think middle school is the dumbest idea ever invented. Got kids like me who haven't hit their growth spurt yet mixed in with these gorillas who need to shave twice a day. Out of my way, rules. And then they wonder why bullying is such a big problem in middle school. If it was up to me, grade levels would be based on height, not age. But then again, I guess that would mean kids like Chiragupta would be in first in the first grade. Okay, that's one name. And okay, there we go. Today is the first day of school, and right now we're just waiting for, around for the teacher to hurry up and finish the seating chart. So I figured I might as well write in this book to pass time. By the way. Let me give you some good advice. On the first day of school, you gotta be real careful where you sit. You walk in the classroom and just point your stuff down at any old desk, and the next thing you know, the teacher is saying, I hope like I hope you all like where you're sitting because that these are your permanent seats. Gah, just like me trying to say that sentence. So in this class, I got stuck with Chris Hosey in front of me and Lionel James in the back of me. Jason Brill came up, came in late and almost sent me, oh, oh my, hold on, let me retry that. Jason Brill came in late and almost sat to my right, but luckily I stopped that from happening at last second. Is this seat taken? Yes, yes. That's kind of me. Next period, I just sit in the middle of a bunch of hot girls as soon as I step in the room, but I guess if I do that, it just proves I didn't learn anything from last year. Greg, will you please pass this note to Shelley? Why, certainly, haha. <laughs> Greg is a dork. Feel bad for my man. 
Man, I don't know what is up with girls in these days. It used to be a whole lot simpler back in elementary school. The deal was if you're the fastest runner in class, you got all the girls. And in fifth grade, the fastest runner was Roni McCoy. Nowadays, it's a lot more complicated. Now it's about the kind of clothes you wear, or how rich you are, or if you have a cute butt or whatever. Kids like this Ronnie McCoy are scratching their heads wondering what the heck happened. The most popular boy in my grade is Bryce Anderson. The thing that really stinks is that I always have been into girls, but kids like Bryce have only come around in the last couple of years. I remember how Bryce used to act back in elementary school. Girls are stinky poos. Yeah. I don't think girls are stinky poos. Huh. Okay. But of course I don't get any credit for sticking with the girls all this time. Like I said, Bryce is the most popular kid in our grade, so that leaves all the rest of us guys scrambling for the other spots. Best I can figure is that some I'm near somewhere around 52nd or 53rd most popular this year. But the good news is that I'm about to move up one spot. Charles Davis is, is above me, and he's getting his braces next week. Huh. And hey, he's got six teeth, so... Oh, wow, y'all didn't even see that page, my bad. I tried to explain all this popularity stuff to my friend Rowley. He was probably hovering around the 150 mark, by the way. What, what a friend. Hey, bro support your homie but I think it just goes out one ear and out with well <laughs> but I think it just goes in one ear and out the other with him Wednesday today we had a fizz ed so we so the first thing I did when I got outside was sneak off to the basketball court to see if the cheese was still there and sure enough it was that piece of cheese has been sitting on the black top since last spring it must have dropped out of someone's sandwich or something. After a couple of days, the cheese started getting all moldy and nasty. Nobody want, would want, whoop, nobody would play basketball in the court where the cheese was, even though that was the only court that had a hoop with a net. Then one day, this kid named Darren Walsh touched the cheese with his finger, and that's what started the whole thing, called the cheese touch. It's basically the cooties. If you get the cheese touch, you're stuck with it until someone passes it on to someone else. Or until you pass it on to someone else. The only way to protect yourself from the cheese touch is to cross your fingers. But it's not, oh. but it's not easy remembering to, cro to keep your fingers crossed every moment of the day. I ended up taping mine together so they would stay crossed all the time. I got a D in handwriting, but it was totally worth it. This one kid named Abe Hall got the cheese touch in April. Nobody would even come near him for the rest of the year. This summer, Abe moved to California and took the cheese touch with him. I just hope someone doesn't start the cheese touch up again, because I don't need that kind of stress in my life anymore. I'm having a seriously hard time getting used to the fact that summer is over and I have to get out of bed every morning to go to school. My summer did not exactly get off to a great start, thanks to my older brother, Roderick. A couple of days in summer vacation, Roderick woke me up in the middle of the night. He told me I had slept through the whole summer, but luckily I woke up just in time for the first day of school. Shoot. You might think I was pretty dumb for falling for that one, but Roderick was dressed up in his school clothes and set my alarm ahead to make it look like it was morning. Plus, he had closed all my curtains so I couldn't see it was still dark out. After Roderick woke me up, I got dressed and went downstairs to make myself some breakfast like I do every day on a school day. But I guess I must have made a pretty big racket because the next thing I knew, Dad was downstairs yelling at me for eating Cheerios at 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm probably going to be doing that after this recording. But hey, Cheerios at 3 a.m. are pretty good. It took me a minute to figure out what the heck was going on. After I did, I told Dad that Roderick had played a trick on me, and he was one that should be getting yelled at. Dad walked down to the basement to chew Roderick out, and I tagged along. I couldn't wait to see what Roderick get to see Roderick get what was coming to him. But Roderick covered up his tracks pretty good, and to this day, I'm sure I'm sure Dad thinks I've got a screw loose or something. 
Today at school, we got assigned to reading groups. <laughs> Clever. That's what I'm doing right now, except alone. But hey, I'm doing this reading. They don't come right out and tell you if you're in the gifted group or the easy group. But you can figure out right away by looking at the covers of the books they hand out. Huh, okay. I was pretty disappointed to find out I got put in the gifted group, but that just means a lot of extra work. When they did the screening at the end of the last year, I did my best to make sure I got put in the easy group this year. Fred picked up the b, but b the book. Whew, thanks. Mom is real tight with our principal, so I bet she stepped back and stepped in and made sure I got put in the grifted, gifted group again. Mom is always saying I'm the smart kid, but that I just don't apply myself. But if there's one thing I learned from Roderick, it's to set people's expectations really low, so you end up surprising them by basically by practically doing nothing at all. Roderick, I want your dirty underwear off the kitchen table before I get home from work. Hmm. Actually, I'm kind of glad my plan to get put in the easy group didn't work. I saw a couple of the bank says boo kids holding their book upside down. And I don't think they were, they were joking. Well, the first week of school is finally over, so today I slept in. Most kids wake up early on Saturday to watch cartoons or whatever, but not me. The reason I get out of bed at all on the weekends is because eventually I can't stand the taste of my own breath anymore. Unfortunately, Dad wakes up at 6 a.m. in the morning, no matter what day of the week it is, and he is not real considerate of the fact that I'm trying to enjoy my Saturday like a normal person. Uh, the way he, how can you vacuum at 6 a.m.? Wait, the clock says 8. How dare he? I didn't have anything to do today, so I just headed up to Rowley's house. Rowley is technically my best friend, but that is definitely a subject to change. Aw. I've been avoiding Rowley since the first day of school when he did something that really annoyed me. We're getting our stuff from our locker, from our lockers at the end of the day, and Riley came up to me and said, Do you want to come over to my house and play? I haven't told Riley at least, I, I have told Riley at least a billion times that now that we're in middle school, you're supposed to say hang out, not play. But no matter how many noggins I give, this, give him, he always forgets the next time. I've been trying to figure out, try to be a lot more careful about my image ever since I got in middle school. But Rowley has, a, whoop, that is a sentence, but having Rowley around is definitely not helping. I met Rowley a few years ago when he moved into my neighborhood. His mom brought him a book, whoop, his mom brought him a book called How to Make Friends in New Places, and he came to my house trying all these dumb gimmicks. Knock, knock, huh? Thermos, excuse me? There must be someone... Wait, there must be some way to tickle your funny bone. Say what? Okay, that's clever. Come on. I guess I kind of felt sorry for Riley, and I decided to take him under my wing. It's been great having him around, mostly because I get used to all the tricks Roderick pulls on me. Did you know that if your hand's bigger than your face, it's a sign of low intelligence? Really? Ha, gotcha. Whap. But do I have low intelligence? Hmm, let me check again. Monday. You know how I said I play all sorts of pranks on Riley? Well, I have a little brother named Manny, and I could never get away with pulling any of that stuff on him. Mom and Dad protect Manny like he's a prince or something. And I never get, and he never gets in trouble, even if he really deserves it. Yesterday, Manny drew a self-portrait on my bedroom door in permanent marker. And I thought my mom... I thought mom and dad were really going to let him have it, but as usual, I was wrong. Ah. Uh. But the thing that bugs me the most about Manny is the nickname he has for me. 
when he was a baby, he couldn't pronounce brother. So he started calling me Bubby. And he still calls me that now, even though I keep trying to get mom and dad to make him stop. Luckily, none of my friends have found out. But believe me, I have some really close calls. Hey, this one says it's to Bubby. Must be a mistake. Oh, don't just throw it out. My sister used to call me Nano when we were kids. Until I was like three or four and then she stopped. Mom makes me help Manny to get ready for school in the morning. I try to make Manny his breakfast. He carries the cereal bowl into the family room and sits on his plastic potty. It's used for cooking and cookies for me. Ha. Huh. And when it's time for him to go to daycare, he gets up and dumps whatever he didn't eat right into the toilet. Mom is always getting on me about not finishing my breakfast, but she had to scrape the cornflakes out of the bottom of a plastic potty every morning. She wouldn't have much of an appetite either. Increasing the book, no. Not what happened to my book from like, I don't know, let me see. Nearly a decade ago, damn. Probably longer. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm super good at video games. I bet I could beat anyone in my grade head to head. Fortunately, Dad does, Dad does not exactly appreciate my skills. He's always getting on me about going out and doing something active. So tonight, after dinner, when Dad started hassling me about going outside, I tried to explain how with the video games you can play sports like football and soccer and you don't even have to get all hot and sweaty. But as usual, Dad didn't see my logic. Dad is a pretty smart guy in general, but when it comes to common sense, sometimes I wonder about him. I'm sure Dad would dismantle my game system if he could figure out how to do it. But luckily, the people who make these things make them parent-proof. <laughs> Dang, they have these fancy gadgets. You could just smash it with, like, I don't know. Just go at it when he wants to. Every time Dad kicks me out of the house to do something sporty, I just go up to rallies and play video games there. Unfortunately, the only games I can play at rallies are car racing games and stuff like that. Because whenever I bring a game up to Rally's house, his dad takes a look on some parents' website, and if my game has any kind of fighting or violence in it, he won't let us play. I'm getting sick, a little sick of playing Formula One racing with Rowley, because he's not even a serious gamer like me. All that you can, all you have to do to beat Rowley is name your car something ridiculous at the beginning of the game, and then you, when you pass Rowley's car, he just falls to pieces. Bad fart ahead. Blah. Hmm, okay, sorry for the noise in the background. Anyway, after I got done mopping the floor with Rowley today, I headed home. I ran through the neighbor's sprinkler a couple of times to make it look like I was all sweaty. And that seemed to do the trick for Dad. Whew. My trick kind of backfired, because as soon as Mom saw me, she made me go upstairs and take a shower. It's good to take a shower, bruh. Come on. Hygiene, bro. Wednesday. I guess Dad must have been pretty happy with himself for making me go outside yesterday because he did it again today. It's getting real annoying to have to go up to Raleigh's every time I want to play a video game. There's this weird kid named Freggle who lives halfway between my house and Raleigh's. And Freggle is always hanging out in his front yard, so it's pretty hard to avoid him. You want to see my secret Freckle? No thanks. I mean, he's wearing a scarf. Hopefully it's under there. Frankly, is in my phys ed class at school, and he's had this whole made-up language, like when he needs to go to the bathroom, he says, juice, juice. Us kids have pretty much figured out Frankly by now, but I don't think the teachers have really caught on yet. Okay, kid, gee whiz, I see. Today, I probably would have gone up to Rowley's on my own anyway, because my brother Roderick and his band were practicing down in the basement. Roderick's band is really awful, and I can't stand being home when they're rehearsals, having rehearsals. His band name is Loaded Diaper, only it's spelled Loaded Dipper on Roderick's van. You might think he spelled it that way to make it look cooler. But I bet if you told Roderick how Loaded Diaper is really spelled, 
it would be news to him. Dad was against the idea of Roderick starting a band, but my mom was all for it. She's the one who bought Roderick his first drum set. I think mom has the idea that we're all going to learn to play instruments and then one, then become one of those family bands like you see on TV. Dad really hates heavy metal, and that's the kind of music Roderick and his band plays. I don't think mom really cares about what Roderick plays or listens to, because to her, all music is the same. In fact, earlier today, Roderick was listening to one of his CDs in the family room. Mom came in and started dancing. That really bugged Roderick, so he drove off to the store and came back 15 minutes later with some headphones. That pretty much took care of the problem. Yesterday, Roderick got a new heavy metal CD. It had one of those parental warning stickers on it. I've never gone to listen to one of those parental warning CDs because my mom and dad would never let me buy them at the mall. So I realized the only way I was going to get a chance to listen to Roderick's CD was if I snuck out of the house. This morning after Roderick left, I called up Rowley and told him to bring a CD player to school. Then I went down to Roderick's room and took the CD off his rack. Not supposed to bring personal music players to school, so we had to wait to use it until after lunch when the teachers let us outside. As soon as we got the chance, me and Raleigh snuck around the back of the school and loaded up Roderick's CD. But Raleigh forgot to put batteries in his CD player, so it was pretty much worthless. Then I came up with a great idea for a game. The object was to put the headphones on your head and then try to shake them off without using your hands. The winner, the winner was whoever could shake the headphones off in the shortest amount of time. But I had the record with seven and a half seconds, but I think I might have shook some of my feelings loose with that one. Right in the middle of our game, Miss Craig came around the corner and caught us red handing. She took the music player away from me and started chewing us out. Well, why? Okay, fuck. Forget it. But I think she had the wrong idea about what we were doing back there. She started telling us how rock and roll is evil and how we're gonna ruin how it's going to ruin our brains. I was going to tell her there weren't any batteries in the CD player, but I could tell her she didn't want to be interrupted, so I just waited until she was done, and then I said, yes, ma'am. But right as Miss Craig was about to go, let us go, Raleigh started blubbering about how he doesn't rock and roll to ruin his brains. Honestly, sometimes I don't want, I don't know about that boy. Alright, well, now I've gone and done it. Last night, after everyone was in bed, I snuck downstairs to listen to Roderick's CD on the family stereo in the family room. Put Roderick's new volumes on and cranked really high in volume. Then I hit play. First, let me say, I definitely understood why they put that parental sticker on the CD. But I only got to hear about the first 30 seconds of the first song before I got interrupted. It turns out I didn't have the headphones plugged into the stereo, so the music was coming through the actual through the speakers, not the headphones. Dad marched me up to my room, shut the door behind me, and said, Let's have a talk. Wait, let's you and me have a talk, friend. Whenever Dad says friend, that way you know you're in trouble. First time Dad ever said friend to me like that. I didn't get it. He was being sarcastic, so I kind of let my guard down. I don't understand that mistake anymore. Tonight, Dad yelled at me for about ten minutes, and then I guess he decided to rather be in bed than standing in my room, uh, in my room in his underwear. He told me I was grounded from playing video games for two weeks, which is about what I expected. I guess I should be glad that's all he did. The good thing about Dad is that when he gets mad, he cools off real quick. Then it's over. Usually, if you mess up from Dad, he just throws whatever he's got in your hands. Throw a brick at your son. Come on, dude. Mom has a totally different style when it comes to punishment. If you mess up and mom catches you, the first thing she does is take a few days to figure out what your punishment should be. And while you're waiting, you do all these nice things to get off easier. I just dusted a dining room table for the heck of it. How thoughtful of you. But then a few days, right when you forget you're in trouble, she that's when she lays it on you. Are you having fun? Yeah, no video games for a week. Monday. This video game band is a whole lot tougher than I thought it would be. 
but at least I'm not the only one in the family who's in trouble. Roderick's in some hot water with Mom right now, too. <laughs> Manny got a hold of one of Roderick's heavy metal magazines, and the pages had a picture of a woman bikini laying across the hood of a car. And then Manny brought it in daycares for show and tell. Anyway, I don't think Mom was too happy about getting that phone call. I saw the magazine myself, and honestly, it wasn't anything to get worked up over. But Mom doesn't allow that kind of stuff in the house. Roderick's punishment was that he had to answer a bunch of questions for Mom wrote out for him. Did owning this magazine make you a better person? No. Did it make you more popular at school? No. How do you feel about having owned this type of magazine now? I feel ashamed. Do you have anything you want to say to the woman for having owned this offensive magazine? I'm sorry, woman. Wednesday. I'm still grounded from playing video games, so many is been using my system. Mom went out and bought a whole bunch of educational video games, and watching many play them is like torture. What number comes after two and rhymes with three? Tree. <laughs> hmm. Three. Three. The good news is I finally figured out how to get some of my games past Riley's dad. I just put in. I just put one of my discs in Manny's discovering the alphabet cases, and that's all it takes. Hmm. At school today, they announced the student government elections are coming up. And to be honest with you, I never had any interest in student government. But when I started thinking about it, I realized getting elected treasurer could totally change my situation at the school. We cheerleaders and are trying to we cheerleaders are tired of riding to games in the same bus as the nerds in the band. Hmm, let me see what you can do. And even better. We jocks just need an air pump to inflate our only football. Yeah, sorry, can't help you with that. Nobody ever thinks about running for treasurer because all anyone ever cares about are the big ticket positions like president and vice president. So I figured if I sign up tomorrow, the treasurer job is pretty much mine for the taking. Today I went and put my name on the list to run for treasurer. Unfortunately, this kid named Marty Porter is running for treasurer too. And he's really brainy at math, so this might not be as easy as I thought. Today, I told Dad I was running for the student government, and he seemed pretty excited. Turns out he ran for student government when he was my age and actually won. Dad dug through some old boxes in the basement and found one of his campaign posters. Integrity, honest, know-how, vote for Frank Heffley for secretary. I thought the poster was a pretty good idea. So I asked Dad to drive me to the store to get some supplies. I loaded up on poster board and markers, and I spent the rest of the night making all my campaign stuff. So let's just hope these posters work. Monday. Oh, that ain't the right page. Monday. I brought my posters to school today, and I have to pretty say they came out good. Do you want Mary Porter to be your treasurer? Dar. Hey, you're dropping all of her money, fool. Do you remember in second grade how Morty Porter had had lice? Itch, itch. Do you really want him touching your money? Hmm. I started to hang up my posters as soon as I got in, but it, they were only up there for about three minutes before Principal Roy spotted them. Roy said they weren't, you weren't allowed to write fabrications about the other candidates. So I told Mr. Roy the thing that... Uh, about the head lice was true and how I practically closed down the whole school when it happened. But he took down all my posters anyway. So today, Marty Porter was going to, around handing out lollipops to buy himself boats while my posters were sitting at the bottom of Mr. Roy's trash can. I guess that means my, po my political career is officially over. Monday. Well, it's finally October and there's only 30 days left until Halloween. It is my favorite holiday. Even though mom says I'm getting too old for this trick-or-treating anymore, Halloween is my dad's favorite holiday, too, but for a different reason. On Halloween night, all the other parents are handing out candy. Dad is hiding in the bush, bushes with a big trash can full of water. And if any teenagers pass by a driveway, he drenches them. Yarr. I'm not sure. I'm not. Wow, well, hold on. I'm not sure dad really understand the concept of Halloween, but I'm not going to be the one who spoils the fun. Trick or treat, haha. 
Tonight was the opening of Crosslines High School Haunted House. My mom and I got my mom to agree to take me and Rowley. Rowley showed up wearing his Halloween costume from last year. When I called him earlier, I told him just to wear regular clothes. But of course, he didn't listen. Well, there you go. I tried not to let it bother me too much, though I'd never been allowed to go to the Crosslands Sanchez house before, and I wasn't going to let it Rowley ruin it for me. Roderick has told me all about it, and I've been looking forward to it for about 30 years. Anyway, when I got to the entrance, I started having second thoughts about going in. But Mom seemed like she was in a hurry to get this over with. She moved us along. Once we were through the gate, it was one scare after another. There were vampires jumping out at you and people without heads. All sorts of crazy stuff. But the worst part was this area called Chainsaw Alley. It's this really big guy in a hockey mask, and he had a real chainsaw. Roderick told me the chainsaw has a rubber blade, but I wasn't taking any chances. Rrr. Right when it looked like the chainsaw guy was going to catch us, our mom stuffed in and bailed us out. That's not nice. I'm sorry, ma'am. Mom made the chainsaw guy show us where the exit was, and that was the end of our haunted house experience right there. I guess it was a little embarrassing when mom did that, but I'm willing to let it go this one time. Hold on one second. Let's see. Page 53 out of 213. About okay. The Crosslands Haunted House really got me thinking those guys were charging five bucks a pop and the line stretched halfway around the school. I decided to make a haunted house of my own. Actually, I had Raleigh bring in on a deal because Mom wouldn't let me convert our first floor into a full out haunted mansion. I knew Raleigh's dad wouldn't be crazy about the idea either, so he decided to build a haunted house in his basement and just not mention it to his parents. Me and Riley spent most of the day coming up with an awesome plan for our haunted house. Here was our final plan. Also the screams, like a blood, bottomless pit, rat tunnel, maze of a thousand skulls, knife alley, hand hall, and death slide, acid lake, and exit. I don't mean to brag or anything, but what we came up with was way better than the cross and high school haunted house. We realized we were going to need the word out that we were doing this thing, so we got a bunch of paper and made up a bunch of flyers. Oh god. I admit maybe we stretched it to the little in our advertisement. We had to make sure people actually showed up. 32 survey, admission 50 cents, 3 p.m. 3 p.m., damn. By the time we finished putting up the flyers around the neighborhood and got back, Raleigh's basement, it was already 2.30, and we haven't even started putting the actual haunted house together. So we had to cut some corners from our original plan. When it was three o'clock, when three o'clock rolled around, we looked outside to see if anyone showed up. Sure enough, there's about 20 neighborhood kids waiting in line outside of Raleigh's basement. Now, I know our flyer said a mission was 50 cents, but I could see that we had a chance to make a killing here. So I told the kids a mission was two bucks and 50 cents was just a typo. The first kid to cough up two bucks was Shane Snow. He paid his money and let him, and we let him inside. And, woo. Riley and me took our positions in the Hall of Screams. Hall of Screams was basically a bed with me and Riley on either side of it. I guess we made the Hall of Screams a little too scary because halfway through, Shane curled up in the ball under, underneath the bed. Tried to get him to crawl out from under there, but he wouldn't budge. Started thinking about all the money we were losing with the kid clogging up the Hall of Screams. I knew we had to get him out of there quick. Eventually, Riley's dad came downstairs. At first, I was happy to see him, but then I thought, could help I thought he could help us drag Shane from out under the bed and get our haunted house cranking again. But Raleigh's dad wasn't in a helpful mood. Raleigh's dad wanted to know what we were doing and why Shane Snella was curled up under the bed. Sorry, I'm repositioning. I'm sitting on the ground right now. <sighs> we told him that the basement was a haunted house and that Sh Shane Snella actually paid for us to do this to him. Raleigh's dad didn't believe us. I admit that if you looked around, it didn't really look like a haunted house. All we had time to put together was the hall screams and a lake of blood, which was just Raleigh's old baby pool filled with half a bottle of ketchup. I tried to show Raleigh's dad our original plan to prove that we were actually running a legitimate operation, but he didn't seem convinced. 
And to make a long story short, that was the end of our haunted house. The good news is, since Raleigh's dad didn't believe us, he didn't make us refund Shane's money. So at least we cleared two bucks today. Riley ended up getting grounded for the whole haunted house mess yesterday. He's not allowed to watch TV for a week, and he's not allowed to have me over at this house during that time. That last part really isn't fair because that's punishing me. I didn't even do anything wrong. And now where am I supposed to play video games? Oh, let me reposition again. My left leg is falling asleep. I've just kicked the lamp. Perfect. Anyway, I felt bad for Raleigh, so tonight I tried to make it up to him. I turned on one of Raleigh's favorite TV shows. I did a play-by-play -play over the phone so he could kind of experience it that way. Look at the size of that flamethrower. Oh yeah, never mind. I did my best to keep up with what was going on on the screen. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure if Raleigh was getting the full effect. I bet this part is going to be funny. Whoop, ha ha, I was right, it was funny. Well, Raleigh's growling. Grounding is finally over, and just in time for Halloween, too. I went up to his house to check on his costume. I have to admit, I'm a little jealous. Raleigh's mom got him this night costume that was way cooler than his costume from last year. His night outfit came with everything. Came with a helmet and a shield and a real sword and everything. I never thought, I never had a store-bought costume before. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to go as tomorrow night. Probably just going to throw something together at last minute. I figure about maybe I'll bring back the toilet paper mummy again. But I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow night, so it might not be the smartest choice. In the past few years, the grown-ups in my neighborhood have been getting cranky about my lame costumes. I'm starting to think it's actually having an effect on the amount of candy I'm bringing in. What are you supposed to be? A cowboy, double baseball hats. But I don't really have enough time to put a good costume because I'm in charge of planning out the best route for me and Rally to take tomorrow night. This year, I've come up with a plan that will get us at least twice the amount of candy we scored last year. About an hour before we were supposed to start trick-or-treating, I didn't have a costume at, at the point. I was seriously thinking about going as a cowboy for the second year in a row. The mom knocked on my door and handed me a pirate costume with an eye patch hook and everything. Riley showed up at 6.30 wearing his night costume, but it didn't look like anything yesterday. It didn't look anything like it looked like yesterday. Riley's mom made all the safety improvements to it, and you couldn't even tell what he was supposed to be anymore. She cut the big hole out. She cut a big hole in front of the helmet so he could see better. Covered him up all in reflective tape. She made him wear his winter coat underneath everything and replaced his sword with a glow stick. I grabbed my pillowcase and me and Rowley started to head out, but Mom stopped us before we get to the door. I want you to take Manny with you. Man, I should have known there was a catch when Mom gave me that costume. I told Mom there was no way we were taking Manny with us because the route that we're going to hit 152 houses in three hours. Plus, we we're going to be on Snake Road, which is way too dangerous for a little kid like Mandy. I should have never mentioned that last part, because the next thing I knew, Mom was telling Dad he had to go along with us to make sure he didn't, we didn't step a foot outside our neighborhood. Dad tried to squirm out of it, but, Mom, but once Mom makes up her mind, there's no way to change it. Before we get, even got into, out of our own driveway, we ran to the neighbor, Mr. Mitchell, and his kid Jeremy. So, of course, they tagged along with us. Manny and Jeremy wouldn't trick-or-treat at any of the houses with spooky decorations on them, so that ruled out pretty much every house on the block. Dad and Mr. Mr. Old would talk, start talking about football or something, and every time one of them wanted to make a point, they would stop walking. So we were about hitting, up, so we were hitting about only one house every 20 minutes. After a couple hours... Dad and Mr. Mitchell took the little kids home. I was glad because that meant Riley could take off. My pillowcase was almost empty, so I wanted to make up as much time as possible. A little later, a little while later, Riley told me he needed to take a potty break. I made him hold off another 45 minutes, but by the time we got to my grandma's house, it was pretty clear if we didn't let Riley use the bathroom, it was going to be a mess. So 
I told Riley if he wasn't back outside in one minute, I was going to start helping myself to his candy. Switching my body position again. I wish I had a chair. A really short chair. After that, we headed back out on the road. But it's already around 10.30. I guess that that's when most grown-ups decide Halloween is over. You can tell because that's when they start coming to the door in their pajamas, giving you the evil eye. We decided to head home. We had, a, we had a lot of time after Dad and Manny left, so I was pretty satisfied with how much candy we took in. When we were halfway home, this pickup truck came roaring down the street with a bunch of high school kids in it. The kid in the back was holding a fire extinguisher. When the truck passed us, he opened fire. I had to give Raleigh credit because he blocked about 90% of the water with the shield. If he hadn't done us done that, all of our candy would have gone soaked. When the truck drove away, I yelled something that I regretted about two seconds later. We're calling the cops. The driver slammed on their brakes and turned his truck around. Me and Riley started to run, but those guys were on our heels. The only place I could think was safe was Graham's house, so we cut through a couple of backyards to get there. Graham was in bed already, but I knew she kept the key under the mat on the front porch. Once we got inside, we, I looked out the window to see if those guys had followed us. Sure enough, they did. I tried to trick them into leaving, but they wouldn't budge. I guess we're, I guess now that we're safe in our own house, you can't get us. <sighs> After a while, we realized the teenagers were just going to wait us out. So we decided that we were just going to have to spend a night at Grandma's. That's when we started to get cocky making monkey noises as teenagers and whatnot. But at least I wasn't making mu- at least I was making monkey noises. Riley was all making some owl noises. But I guess it was the same general idea. I called my mom to tell her that we were going to crash at grandma's for a night, but mom sounded really mad at the phone. She said it was a school night and that we had to get home right this instant, so that meant we were going to have to make a run for it. I looked out the window, and at this time, I didn't see the truck, but I knew those guys were hiding somewhere and just trying to draw us out. So we snuck out the back door, hopped over Graham's fence, and ran all the way to Snake Road. I figured our chances were better there because there weren't any street lights. Snake Road is scary enough on its own without having a truckload of teenagers hunting you down. Every time we saw a car coming, we dove into the bushes. It must have taken us half an hour to go a hundred yards. Believe it or not, but we made it all the way home without getting caught. Neither of us let our guard down until we got to my driveway. <sighs> but right then, there was an awful scream, and a big wave of water came towards us. Splash. Man, I forgot all about Dad, and we were totally paid the price for it. Whoops, haha. <laughs> when me and Riley got inside, we laid all of our candy on the kitchen table. Another reposition. The only things that we could salvage were a couple pieces of mint that were wrapped in styrofoam and toothbrushes Dr. Garrison gave us. I think next Halloween I'll just stay at home and mooch some butterfingers from the bowl mom keeps at the top of the refrigerator. Thursday. On the bus ride into school today, we passed by Graham's house. He got rolled with toilet paper last night, which I guess was no big surprise. I do, feel, I do feel a little bad because it looked like it was going to take a long time to clean up. But on the bright side, Grandma is retired, so she probably didn't have anything planned for today anyway. What the fuck? Damn, okay. Wednesday. In third period, Mr. Underwood, our phys ed teacher, announced that all the boys will be doing wrestling in it for six weeks. Sorry, I'm repositioning my bad. Here we go. There's one thing that most boys in our school are no- into. It's professional wrestling. So Mr. Underwood might as well set off a ball. Lunch comes right after phys ed. And the cafeteria was a complete madhouse. I didn't know what the school was thinking of having a wrestling unit. But I decided if I didn't want to get twisted into a pretzel for the next half month, month and a half, I better do my homework on this wrestling business. rented a couple of video games to learn some moves. And you know what? After a while, I was really starting to get a hang of it. Does this feel right? Yes. No. Help. 
fact, the other kids in my class had a better look, better look out. And if I keep this up, I could become a real threat. Then again, I better make sure I do not do too good. This kid named Preston Mudd got named the Athlete of the Month for being the best player in the basketball unit. So they put his picture up in the hallway. It took people about five seconds to realize how P. Mudd sounded like sounded when you said it out loud. And after that, it was all over for Preston. P. Mudd, P. Mudd. Thursday. And I found out today that the kind of wrestling Mr. Underwood is teaching is completely different from the kind they do on TV. First of all, we have to wear these things called singlets, which look like bathing suits they used to wear in the 1800s. The second of all, there's no pile drivers or hitting people over the head with chairs or anything. There's not even a ring with ropes around. It's basically a sweaty mat that smells like it's never been washed before. Mr. Underwood started asking for volunteers so he could demonstrate some wrestling holds. There's no way I was going to raise my hand. Me and Riley tried to hide up in the back of the gym near the curtain, but that's where the girls were doing gymnastics. We got out of there in a hurry and went back to where the rest of the guys were. Mr. Underwood singled me out, probably because I'm the last kid in class. He could toss me, he said, wait, and he could toss me around without straining himself. He showed everyone how to do all these things called half nestle and a reversal and a takedown and stuff like that. When he was doing one of the moves called the fireman's carry, I felt a breeze down below, and I could tell my singlet wasn't doing a good job keeping me covered. That's why I think my lucky stars the girls were on the other side of the gym. <laughs> Mr. Underwood divided us into weight groups. I was pretty happy about that at first, but because of that, I was going to have to wrestle kids like Benny Wells, who can bench press 250 pounds. But then I found out who I did have to wrestle, and I would trade for Benny Wells in a heartbeat. Great, you'll be paired up with Fregley here. Fregley was the only kid light enough to be in my weight class. Apparently, Fregley was paying attention when Mr. Woods was giving me instructions. He pinned me down every... He pinned... Wait, because he pinned me every which way you could imagine. I spent my seventh period getting way more familiar with Fregley than I ever wanted to be. Tuesday. This wrestling unit has totally turned our school upside down. Now kids are wrestling in the hallways, in the classrooms, you name it. But the 15 minutes after lunch where they let us outside is the worst. You can't walk five feet without tripping over a couple of kids going at it. I just, I just try to keep my distance and mark my words over these fools going to... I can't speak. I just try to keep my distance Mark my words, one of these fools is going to roll right into my cheese and start the cheese touch again, all over again. My other problem is that I have to wrestle frankly every single day. But this morning I realized something. If I can't move out, if I can move out of Fregley's weight class, I won't have to wrestle him anymore. So today, I stuffed my clothes with a bunch of socks and shirts to get myself in the next weight class. But I was still too light to move up. I realized I was going to have gained weight for real. At the first moment, I thought I should just start loading up a junk food, but then I had a much better idea. I decided to gain weight and muscle, not fat. I've never been all interested in getting in shape before, but the wrestling unit has made me rethink things. I figured if I bulk up now, it could actually come in handy down the road. The football unit was coming up in the spring. They split the teams of the shirts and skins, and I always get put on the skins. I think they do that to make all the out-of-shape kids feel ashamed of themselves. If they can pack on some muscle now, it'll be a whole different story next April. Greg Heffley, you're on the skins. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Tonight after dinner, I got Mom and Dad together, and they told them my plan. I told them I was going to need some serious exercise equipment and some weight gain powder, too. I showed them my muscle magazines and got this store so they could see how ripped that was going to be. Mom didn't really say anything at first, but Dad was pretty enthusiastic. I think he was just glad that I had a change of heart from how I used to be when I was a kid. If you work out regularly, you can get big muscles. Muscles are gross. But Mom said if I wanted a weight set, I was going to have to prove that I could stick with my exercise regime. 
She said I could do that by doing sit-ups and jumping jacks for two weeks. I explained the only way to get that totally bulked, bulked up is to get the con- Oh, sorry. I did it. Ooh. Hold on, rewind time. I had to explain that the only way to get totally bulked up is to get that kind of high-tech machine they had at the gyms. But Mom didn't want to hear it. Then Dad said if I wanted to bench press, I should keep my fingers crossed for Christmas. But Christmas is a month and a half away. And if I get pinned by Fairly one more time, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. So it looks like Mom and Dad aren't going to have going to be any help. But that means I'm going to have to start taking matters into my own hands as usual. I couldn't wait to start my weight training program today. Even though Mom wouldn't let me get the equipment I needed, I was going to let that I wasn't going to let that hold me back. So I went to the fridge and emptied out the milk and the orange juice and filled the jugs with sand. I then taped them to the broomstick and I had myself a pretty decent dump barbell. After that, I made a bench press out of an iron board and some boxes. Once I had that all set, I was ready to do some serious lifting. I needed a spotter partner, so I called Rowley and he showed up at my door wearing a ridiculous kit. I knew it was a mistake in fighting him. I made Rowley use the bench press first, mostly because I wanted to see if the broomstick would go in the hold up. He had about five reps and I was ready to quit, but I wouldn't let him. That's what you call good training partners for. You push beyond your limits. I knew Rowley was going to be serious about waiting, lifting as I was, so I decided to try out an experiment to test his dedication. In the middle of Rowley's set, I went and got this phone he knows and must that Roderick has in this trunk drawer. Oh, sorry about that. Get this at the back of the book. Here we are. And then Rowley had the barbell in a down position. I leaned over and looked at him. Fruit. Surely enough, Rowley totally lost his concentration. He couldn't even get the barbell off his chest. I thought about helping him out, but then I realized that Rowley didn't get serious with the workout. He's never going to get on my level. I eventually had to rescue him because he started biting the milk jug to let sand out. Let me go. After Rowley got off the bench press, it was time for my set. But Rowley didn't feel like working out anymore, and he went home. You know what, I figured he would pull something like that, but I guess you can't expect everyone to have the same kind of dedication as you. Today in geography, we had a quiz. I and I have to say I've been looking forward to this one. The quiz was on state capitals, and I sit in the back of the room right next to this giant map of the United States. All the capitals are written in big red print, so I knew I had this one in the bag. But right before the test got started, Patty Farrell piped up in front of the, from the front of the room. Patty told Mr. I should cover up the United States map before we got started. Let's catch Patty. So thanks to Patty, I ended up flanking the quiz. I'll definitely be looking for a way to pay her back for that one. Thursday. Tonight, Mom came into my room and she had a flyer in her hand. As soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. It, what it was. It was an announcement that the school was having tryouts for a winter play. Man, I should have thrown that thing out when I saw it on the kitchen table. I begged her not to make me sign up for it. Those school plays are always musicals that last, and the last thing I need to have is sing solo in front of the whole school. But all my begging seemed to make Mom more sure that I should do it. Once I got a reposition again, you're going to see the back of the book. Perfection and we're no, I'm kidding. All right, here we go. The house is waking up again. It's like itchy wrist. Yeah, here we go. Mom said the only one, the only way I was going to be well rounded was by trying different things. Dad came into my room to see what was going on. I told Dad that the mom, I told Dad that mom was making me sign up for the school play. I thought I'd start going to play practice and mess up my weightlifting schedule. I knew that I knew that would make Dad take my side. Dad and Mom argued for minutes, but Dad was no match for Mom. So that means tomorrow I got an audition for the school play. Friday, the play that they're doing this year is The Wizard of Oz, and a lot of kids came in wearing costumes for the parts that they were trying out for. I never... Oh, my wrist. Don't mind me. Here we go. Do it again. Never ever 
never seen the movie, so for me it was like walking to a freak show. Miss Norn, the music director, made everyone sing My Country Tis of Thee so she could hear our singing voices. I did my singing tryouts with a bunch of other boys whose moms made them come too. I tried to sing as quietly as possible, but of course I got singled out anyway. What a lovely surprise, I do I have no idea what a soprano is, but from the way some of the girls were giggling, I knew it wasn't a good thing. Tryouts went on forever. The grand final came with additions for Dory, who I guess is the lead character in the play, and who should try out but for, and who should try out first but Patty Farrell. I thought about trying out for the part of the witch because I heard that in the play the witch does all sorts of things, mean things to Dorothy. But then someone told me there's a good witch and a bad witch, and with my luck I would end up being picked to be the good one. I was hoping Mr. Morton would just cut me from the play, but today she said she, that everyone who tried out was going to get a part, so lucky me. Mr. Norton showed the Wizard of Oz movie so everyone would figure out the story. I was trying to figure out which part I should play, but pretty much every character has to sing or dance at one point or another. But halfway through the movie, I figured out what part I wanted to sign up for. I'm going to sign up to be a tree because one, they don't have to sing, and two, they get to be in Dorothy with apples. Well, getting the peg part thing with apples in front of live off things would be my dream come true. I may actually have to thank Vaughn for making me do this play once and it's once it's all over. After the movie ended, I signed up to be a tree. Unfortunately. Uh, a bunch of other guys had the same idea as me. So I guess there's a lot of guys who also have a bone to pick with Patty Farwell. Farrell. I just realized it's Farrell, not Farwell. Well, like Mom always says, be careful what you wish for. I got picked to be a tree, but I didn't know it was going to be a good, such a... don't know if it's such a good thing. Tree costumes don't actually have armholes, so I guess that rules out any apple throwing. I should probably feel lucky that I got spe got speaking part at all. Too ma they had too many kids trying out, so and not enough roles, so they had started making up characters. Rodney James tried to be tried out to be Tin Can, but he got stuck with being the shrub. Remember how I said I was lucky to get the speaking a speaking part? Today I found out that I only have one line in the whole play. I say when Dorothy picks an apple off my branch. Ouch. That means I have to go two hours of pra I have to go to a two-hour practice every day just so I can say one stupid word. I'm starting to think Rowdy James got a better deal as a shrub. He found a way to sneak a video game into his costume. I bet that really makes the time go by. Beep boop boop. Wait beep boop beep boop. There we go. Now I'm trying to think of ways to get Mrs. Norton to kick me out of the play. But when you only have one word to say, it's really hard to mess up your lines. Ouch. The play is only a couple days away, and I have no idea how we're going to pull this thing, this thing off. First of all, nobody has bothered to learn their lines, and that's all Miss Norton's fault. During rehearsal, Miss Norton whispers everyone's lines to them from the side of the stage. I'll get you, my pretty. I'll get you, my pretty. Wow, what a good monotone voice to do different voices. Nice. And I'm not even showing the page. Whoops. I wonder how it's going to be next Tuesday. How it's going to go next Tuesday when Miss Norton is sitting at her piano 30 feet away. Another thing that keeps that screws up everything is that Miss Norton keeps adding new scenes and new characters. Yesterday she brought in this first grader to play Dorothy's dog Toto, but today the kid's mom came in and said she wanted her child to walk around on two legs. He's crawling around on all fours, it would be too degrading. So now we've got a dog that's going to be walking around on his hind legs for the whole show. The worst thing is that no one actually wrote a song that his trees have to sing. She said everyone deserves a chance to sing in the play. So today we spent an hour learning the worst song that has ever been written. The B3 Trees. God or Roderick wouldn't be in the audience to see me humiliate myself. This one said that the play is going to be a semi-formal occasion. I know there's no way Roderick's going to wear a tie for a middle school play. My foot is definitely asleep. 
Oh, that is knockout sleep. Okay, there we go. But today wasn't all bad. Towards the end of practice, Arch Shelley tripped over Rodney James and chipped his tooth because he couldn't stick his arms out to rake the fall. So the good news is they're letting us trees carve out armholes for the performance. Tonight was a big school production of The Wizard of Oz. The first time that things were not going well before the play even started. It's peeking through the curtain to check out how many people showed up to the play. Gifts was standing right out, right up in front. My brother Roderick wearing a clip-on tie. He must have found out I was singing. Couldn't resist the chance to be embarrassed on myself. The play was supposed to start at 8, but it got delayed because Rodney James had stage fright. You think for someone whose job was to sit on stage and do nothing could just be stuck up for one performance. But Rodney wouldn't budge and eventually his mom had to carry him off. The play finally got started around 8.30. Nobody could remember their lines, just like I predicted, but Miss Morton kept things moving along with her piano. The kid who plays Toto brought a stool and a pile of comic books on stage. It totally ruined the whole dog effect. When it was time for the floor scene, me and the other trees hopped into positions. The curtains rose, and that's when that huh. And when they did, I heard Manny's voice, Bubby. Great, I have to be able to keep that nickname quiet for five years now, and all of a sudden, the whole town knew it. I could feel about 300 pairs of eyeballs pointing my way. So I did some quick ad-libbing. I was able to deflect the embarrassment over to our chick, Kelly. I think you dropped an apple, Bubby. But the major embarrassment was still on the way. And I heard Miss Owen playing the first few bars of We Three Trees. I felt my stomach jump. I looked out the audience and noticed Roderick was holding a video camera. I knew that if we sang this song, Roderick recorded it. He would keep the tape forever and use the hill to alleviate me for the rest of my life. I didn't know what to do, so my time when it came to sit. When it came to start singing, I kept my mouth shut. For a few seconds, things went okay. I figured that if I didn't technically sing the song, then Roderick wouldn't have anything to hold over my head. But after a few seconds, the other trees noticed I wasn't singing. I guess they must have thought I knew something they didn't, so they stopped singing too. Now the three of us were just standing there, not saying a word. Miss Norton must have th uh, thought we forgot the words to the song. She came over to the side of the stage and whispered the rest of the lyrics to us. Oh. The song is about three minutes long, but it felt like an hour and a half. I was just praying the curtains would go down and something would hop off stage. That's when I noticed Patty Farewell saying the wings, and if it looks like if looks could kill us, trees would be dead. She probably thought we were ruining her chances at making it to Broadway or something. Seeing Patty standing there reminded me why I signed up to be a tree in the first place. Bonk. Pretty soon, the rest of us trees started throwing apples, too. I think even Toto got in on the act. So I knocked all the glass off Patty's head, and one of the lenses broke. Miss Norton had to shut down the play after that, because Patty couldn't see her tuned feet in front of her without her glasses. After the play was over... My family went home together. My mom had brought a bouquet of flowers, and I guess they were supposed to be for me, but she ended up tossing them in the trash can on the way out the door. I hoped that everyone who came to see the play was just as entertained as I was. Another reposition. Hold on. <sighs> well, if one good thing came out of the play, that I don't have to worry about the don't have to worry about the Bubby nickname anymore. I saw Arch Kelly getting hassled in the hallway after fifth period today, and it looks like I can finally start to breathe easier. Hi there, Bubby. With all this stuff going on at school, I haven't even had time to think about Christmas, and it's less than ten days away. In fact, the only thing that tipped me off that Christmas was coming when Roderick put up his wish list on the refrigerator. Refrigerator. I surely make a big wish list every year, but this Christmas all I want is this video game called Twisted Wizard. Tonight, Manny was going through all the Christmas catalogs, picking all the stuff he wants with a big red marker. He was circling really expensive things like a giant motorized car and stuff like that. 
so I decided to step in and give him some good brotherly advice. I told him that if he circled stuff that was too expensive, he was going to end up with a bunch of clothes for Christmas. I said he should just pick three or four medium price gifts so he would end up with a couple of things he actually wanted. But of course, then he just went back to circling everything. So I guess he would just have to learn the hard way. When I was seven, the only thing I really wanted for Christmas was a Barbie dream house. And not because I like girl, to girl toys like Roderick said. I just thought it would be a really awesome fort for my toy soldiers. My mom and dad saw my wish list that year. They got into a big fight over it. Dad said there was no way it was going to be a dollhouse. But mom said it was a he healthy for me to experiment with the other toys I wanted to play with. Believe it or not, dad actually won that argument. Dad told me to start my wish list over and pick some toys that are more appropriate for boys. But I have a secret weapon when it comes to Christmas. My Uncle Charlie always gets me whatever I want. I told him I wanted the Barbie dream house and he... He'd hooked me up. On Christmas, when Uncle Charlie gave me a gift, it was not what I asked for. He must have walked into the toy store and picked up the first thing he saw had the word Barbie on it. So if you ever see a picture of me when I'm holding a beach fun Barbie, now you at least know the whole story. Dad wasn't really happy with what his Uncle Charlie got me. He told me to either throw it away or give it up to charity, but I kept it anyway. Okay, maybe I took it out and played with it once or twice. That's how I ended up in the emergency room two weeks later with a pink Barbie shoe stuck up my nose. And believe it, Roderick has never let me hear the end of that. Tonight, Mom and me went to get a gift for the giving tree at church. The giving tree basically a secret Santa kind of thing where you get a gift for someone who's needy. Mom picked out a red wool sweater for the giving tree guy. I tried to talk into giving something a lot cooler, like a TV or a slushy machine or something like that. Because imagine if all you got on Christmas was a wool sweater. I'm sure the giving guy, tree guy will throw away his sweater in the trash along with the 10 cans of yam we sent his way during the Thanksgiving food drive. When I woke up this morning and went downstairs, there was about a million gifts under the Christmas tree. But when I started digging around, there's hardly any gifts with my name on them. But man, he made out like a bandit. He got every single thing he circled in the catalog. No lie. So I bet he's glad he didn't listen to me. I did find a couple of things with my name on them, but they were mostly books and socks and stuff like that. I opened my gifts in the corner behind the couch because I don't like opening my gifts near Dad. Whenever someone opens a gift, Dad swoops right in and cleans up after them. I gave Manny a toy helicopter, and I gave Roderick a book about rock bands. Roderick gave me a book, too, but of course he didn't wrap it. The book he got me was Best of Little Kitty. Little Kitty was the worst comic in the newspaper. Roderick knows how much I hate it. I think this year is the first, fourth year in a row I've gotten Little Kitty book from him. I give Mom and Dad their gifts, but I get them the same thing, kind of thing every year. But parents eat that stuff up. The rest of the relatives started showing up at noon, around 11. And Uncle Charlie came at noon. Uncle Charlie brought a big trash can full of gifts, and they pulled my present out of the top of the bag. The bag was the exact right shape and size of the Twisted Wizard game, so I knew Uncle Charlie came through for me. Mom got the camera ready, and as I tore open my gift, but it was just an 8x10 picture of Uncle Charlie. I guess I didn't do a good job enough of hiding my disappointment, and Mom got mad. All I can say is I'm glad I'm still a kid because if I had actually happy about these kind of gifts grown up skit, I don't think I could pull it off. Hmm. I went up to my room to take a break for a while. A couple minutes later, my dad knocked on my door. He told me he had a gift out in the garage. The reason it was out there was it was too big to keep wrapped up. And when I walked down to the garage, there was a brand new weight set. Thing that must have cost a fortune. I didn't have the I didn't have the heart to tell Dad. I lost interest in the whole weightlifting thing when the wrestling unit ended last week. So I just said thanks instead. I think Dad was expecting me to drop down and start doing some reps or something. But I just excused myself and went back inside. 
Oh, it's six. All the relatives cleared out. I was sitting on the couch watching Manny play with the toys, feeling pretty sorry for myself. Then Mom came in and up to me and said she found a gift behind the piano with my name on it, and it said, From Santa. The box was way too big for Twisted Wizard, but Mom pulled the same big box trick on me last year when she got me a memory card for my video game system. I ripped the package open and pulled out my present. Only it wasn't Twisted the Wizard either. It was a giant red wool sweater. At first I thought Mom was playing some kind of practical joke on me, because the sweater was the same kind we bought for a giving tree guy. But Mom seemed pretty confused too. She said she did buy me a video game, and that he, she had no idea what that sweater was doing in my box. Huh. Then I figured out. I told Mom there must have been some kind of mix-up, and I got the Giving Trees gift, guy's gift. He got mine. Mom said she used the same kind of wrapping paper for both of our gifts, and she must have written the wrong names on the tags. But then Mom said this was a really good thing because the Giving Tree guy was probably happy he got a great gift. I had to explain that he needed a game system and a TV to play Twisted Wizard, so the game was totally useless to him. Even though my Christmas was not going to get that great, I'm sure it's going to get a whole lot worse for the Giving Tree guy. Rip. Hey, at least when he does get a game, gaming system, well, no, he has a game. I kind of decided to throw in the towel for this Christmas. I ended up heading up to Raleigh's house. I forgot to get a gift for Raleigh, so I just had slapped a bow on the little cutie book and Roger gave me, and that seemed to do the trick. Raleigh's parents seem to have a lot of money, so I can always count on them for a good gift. But Raleigh said this year he picked out my gift himself. He bought, brought me outside to show me what it was. From the way Raleigh was hyping his present, I thought he must have got a new big screen TV or motorcycle or something. <laughs> but once again, I let my hopes get too high. Raleigh got me a big wheel, and I guess I would have thought this was a cool gift when I was in third grade, but I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with it now. Raleigh is so enthusiastic about it, and I tried my best to act like I was happy anyway. We went back inside, and Raleigh showed me his Christmas loot. One second, another reposition. My foot keeps falling asleep. He's sure got a lot more stuff than I did. He even got Twisted Wizard, so at least I can play it when I come up to his house. That is until Raleigh's dad finds out how violent it is. Mm. And boy, have you ever seen someone as happy as Raleigh with this little cutie book? His mom said it was the only thing on his list that he didn't get. As someone got what they wanted today. New Year's Eve. In case you're wondering, I've been in my room doing it. Wait, I'm, in, I'm doing in my room at 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Let me fill you in. Earlier today, me and Manny were horsing around in the basement. I found a tiny black ball thread on the carpet and, made, and I told Manny it was a spider. Then I held it pretending like I was going to make him eat it. Right when I thought I was, about, I was about to let Manny go, he set my hand and made me drop the thread. And guess what? That fool swallowed it. <sighs> well, Manny completely lost his mind. He ran upstairs to where Mom was and I knew I was going to be in big trouble. Manny told Mom I made him eat a spider, and I told her there was no spider, and that was a tiny ball of thread. Ma Mom brought Manny to the over the kitchen table, then placed a seed, a raisin, and a grape on the plate, and, Manny t and told Manny to point the... Oh, wow, fuck. Oops, sorry, excuse me. And a grape on the plate, <laughs> and told Manny to point the thing that was close to size to the piece of thread he swallowed. Manny took a while to look over the things on the plate. He walked over to the refrigerator and pulled out an orange. So that's why I got sent to my bed at 7 and not downstairs watching the New Year's Eve on special on TV. That's why my only New Year's resolution is never to play with Manny again. Wednesday. I found out a way to have some fun with a big wheel. Oh, he got me for Christmas came up with this game where one guy rides down the hill and the other tries to knock him off with a football. Raleigh was the first one down the hill and I was the thrower. It was a lot harder to hit a moving target than I thought. Plus, I didn't get a lot of practice. It took Raleigh like 10 minutes to walk the big wheel back to the top of the hill after every trip down. Raleigh kept asking to switch places and have me be the one who rides the big wheel. But I'm no fool. That thing was hitting 35 miles an hour. 
I didn't have any breaks. Hmm, okay. That's one way to put it. Sorry, scratch my nose. Anyway, I never did knock probably off the big wheel today. Ah, let me reposition. Got my hands falling asleep. Anyway, I never did knock Crowley off the big old today, but I guess I have something so I'll have something to work at over the rest of Christmas vacation. I was heading up the rallies today to play our big wheel game again, but Mom said I had to finish my Christmas thank yous before I went out anywhere. Mm. Thought I could crank out my thank you cards in half an hour, but when it came to actually writing them, my mind went blank. Let me tell you something, it's not easy writing thank you notes for all the stuff you didn't want in the first place. Mm, sorry about that. So I'd write, I started with the non-close like items because I thought they would be easiest. But after two or three cards, I realized I was practically writing the same thing every time. So I wrote up a general form on the computer with blanks for the things that I needed to change. Writing the cards, the... <laughs> Ran the coach from there, it was a breeze. Thank you for the awesome encyclopedia. How did you know I wanted that for Christmas? I love that encyclopedia. All my friends will be jealous because I own my own encyclopedia. Thank you for the bank make this best Christmas ever. Pants, pants, legs, pants. <laughs> I finally knocked Riley off the big wheel today, but it didn't happen the way I expected. I was trying to hit him under in the shoulder, but I missed, and the football went under the front tire. Well, I tried to break his fall by hitting, sticking out his arms, but he landed pretty hard on his left hand. I feared he would shake it off and get right back up, but he didn't. I tried cheering him up, but all the jokes that usually crack him up were, so I knew he must have been hurt pretty bad. On vacation, on Christmas vacation is over. And now we're back at school. And remember the big, Riley's big wheel accident? And we broke his hand and now he has to wear a cast. And everyone is crowd, uh, everyone is crowding him around like he was a hero or something. Oh god, here we go. I tried to cash in on some Riley's new popularity, but it totally backfired. And the one who broke his hand. It was me, Dio. lunch, a bunch of the girls invited Riley over to the table so they could feed him. What really ticks me off is that Riley is right-handed and that his left hand is broken, so he can just feed himself just fine. I realized Riley's injury is a pretty good racket, so I decided it was, decided it was for me to do I have an injury of my own. He's just come goals from home, and I wrapped up, wrapped up my hand to make it look like it hurt. I couldn't figure out why the girls weren't swarming me like they swarmed Riley. But I realized what the problem was. I see the cast is a great gimmick because everyone wants to sign their name on it, but it's not exactly an easy way to sign gauze with a pen. So I came up with a situation I thought was just as good. Sympathy sheet. The idea was a total bust too. My band-aid did end up attracting attention from a couple of people, but believe me, they were not the type of people I was going for. Can I peek at your affection? <laughs> Go away. Last week we started in third quarter at school. So now I have a whole bunch of new classes. One of my classes I signed up for is called is something called Independent Study. I wanted to sign up for home economics too because I had a pretty good in home ec one. But being good at sewing does not exactly buy you popularity points at school. Look, Greg has a purse. Actually, it's an embroidered bag. Okay, Percy. Hmm. Anyway, this independent study thing is an experiment they're trying out at the school for the first time. The idea is that the class gets assigned a project, and then you have to work on it together. With no teacher in the room for the whole quarter, the catch is that when you're done, everyone in your group it gets the same grade. I found out that Ricky Fisher is in my class, which could be a big problem. Ricky big. Ricky's big claim to fame is that he'll pick the gum off a, the bottom of a desk and chew it for you. Pay him 50 cents so I really don't have the high hopes for our final grade. Mm -hmm. 
today we got our independent study assignments and guess what we have to build a robot at first everyone kind of freaked out because we thought we were going to have to build a robot from scratch but Mr. Darrell told us we don't have to build an actual robot we just need to come up with ideas for what our motor robot may look like and what kinds of things it would be able to do then he left the room we were able on our own we started brainstorming right away and I wrote down a bunch of ideas on the blackboard Everyone was pretty impressed with my ideas, but it, it was easy to come up with. All I had to do was write all the things down I hate doing myself. But a couple of girls got up in the front of the room, and they had some ideas of their own. They erased my list and drew up their own plan. They wanted to invent a robot that would give you dating advice and ten types of lip gloss on its fingertips. All of us guys thought this was the stupidest idea we've ever heard. So we ended up splitting our ideas into two groups, girls and boys. We went to, the one, went to the other side of the room while the girls stood up around talking. Now that all the workers in one place, wait, hold on. Now that we all, the serious workers in one place, we got to work. Someone had the idea that you could say your name to the robot and it could say it back to you. But then someone else pointed out that you shouldn't be able to use bad words for your name because the robot shouldn't be able to curse. So we decided to come up with a list of all the bad words and the robot shouldn't be able to say. We came up with a list of regular bad words, but Ricky Fisher came up with 20 more the rest of us had never heard of. So Ricky ended up being the one, one of the most valuable contributors of the project. Right before the bell rang, Mr. Darrell came up, Darnell came up to the back room to check on our progress. He picked up the piece of paper we were writing on and read it over. To make a long short story, independent is canceled for, <laughs> independent studies canceled for the rest of the year. But Lisa, it is for us boys. So the robot uh, in the future are going around with cherry lipstick gloss for fingers. At least you know how it all got started. Thursday. In school today, there is a general assembly. They show the movie, It's Great to Be Me, which they show with us every year. And the movie is all about how you should be happy with who you are yourself and not change anything about you, about yourself. Oh, sorry, pardon me. My hair is in my eye. To be honest with you, I think it's a really dumb message. You tell my kids, especially one of, uh, especially the ones at my school. Later on, they made an announcement. There's some openings on the safety patrols, and that got me thinking. If anyone picks up on safety patrol, it can get them suspended. The way I figured it, I can use any extra protection I can get. Plus, I realized that maybe being in a position of authority could be good for me. Can we please cross the street now? Nope, but we've been standing here for hours. I went down to Mr. Lewinsky's office and signed myself up, and I got Rowley signed up too. I thought Mr. Lewinsky could make us do a bunch of chin-ups or jumping jacks or something to prove that we were up for the job, but he just handed us our belts and, pass and belts and badges on the spot. Mr. Lewinsky said the openings were for a special assignment. Our school is right next to the elementary school, and they got half a day they got half a day kindergarten there. He wanted us to walk the morning session kids home in the middle of the day. I realized that meant we would miss 20 minutes of pre-algebra. I really must have figured that out too because he started to speak up, but I gave him a wicked pinch underneath the desk because before he could finish his sentence. I couldn't believe my luck. I was getting insta-bully protection and a free pass from half of pre-algebra, and I didn't even have to lift a finger. Today was our first day of safety patrols. Me and Rowley didn't technically have the stations like all the other patrols, so that means we didn't have to stand out in the freezing cold for a half an hour before school. That didn't stop us from coming to the cafeteria for the free hot chocolate they handed out to the other patrols before home. Another great perk is that you get to show up 10 minutes late for your first period. I'm telling you, I got it made for the safety patrol thing. At 12.15 at Raleigh, me and Raleigh left school and walked to kindergartners home. The whole trip ate up 45 minutes. There were only about 20 minutes of pre-algebra left when we got back. Walking the kids home was no sweat, but one of my kindergartners started to smell funny. I think he may have had an accident in his pants. He tried to let me know about it, but I would just keep staring straight and kept walking. I didn't take these kids home, but believe me, I didn't sign up for dirty diaper duty. For diaper duty, okay. Read 
adjust. There we go. Wednesday. Today it snowed for the first time this winter and school was canceled. We were supposed to do a test in pre algebra and I've been kind of psyched off for ever since it became a safety patrol, so I was psyched. <clears throat> My throat. Okay. I called Rally and I told him to come over. Me and Rally have been talking about building the world's biggest snowman for the past couple of years now. And when I say world's biggest snowman, I'm not kidding. Our world records getting the Guinness Book of World Records. Every time we've gotten serious about going for the record, all the snow has melted and we've missed our window of opportunity. So this year, I want to get started right away. When Raleigh came over, we started rolling the first snowball to make the base. We figured out the base was going to have to be at least 8 feet tall if we wanted to have a shot at breaking the world record. <laughs> Sorry. But the snowball got real heavy and we had to take a bunch of breaks in between rolls to catch our breath. During one of our breaks, Mom came outside to go to grocery, but her snowball was blocking her coming away. She got a little free labor out of her. Oh, excuse me, radiator. I didn't know you didn't like that. Uh, they're trying to get groceries, okay? After our break, me and Riley pushed that snowball until we couldn't push it any farther. But when we looked behind us, we saw the mess we had made. The small gun so heavy that it tore up all of the sod that it just laid down into this fall. I was hoping that it, snow, it would snow a few more inches and cover up our tracks, but just like that, it stopped snowing. Our plan was to build this biggest snowman it was starting to fall apart. <laughs> so I came up with a better idea for a snowball. Every time it snows, the kids from Portland Street used our hill for sledding, even though this isn't their neighborhood. So tomorrow morning when the whirly kids go, whirly kids, oh, so tomorrow morning when the whirly street kids come marching up our hill, me and Riley are going to teach those guys a lesson. Thursday when I woke up this morning, the snow was already starting to melt, so I told Riley to hurry up and get down to my house. When I was waiting for Riley to show up, I watched Manny try to build the snow and out pitifully little crumbs that fell over from our snowball. It's kind of pathetic. I really couldn't help doing what I did next. Unfortunately for me, right at that moment, Dad was standing in the front window. Dad was already mad at me for tearing up the sod, so I knew I was in for it. When the garage door opened, I saw Dad coming outside and he marched right out carrying a snow shovel. I thought I was going to have to make a run for it. But Dad was heading for my snowball, not me. And in less than a minute's work, he reduced the hard work to nothing. Probably came back a few minutes later and I thought he, he might actually get a kick out of what happened. But I guess he had his heart on set on rolling the snowball down the hill. He was really mad at me. But get this, Raleigh was mad at me for what Dad did. I told Raleigh he was being a baby and we got into a shoving match. Right when it looked like we were going to get an all-out fight, we got ambushed from the street. It was a hit and run by the Whirly Street kids. And if this... Mm, <clears throat> Mr. Clive, my English teacher, was there. I'm pretty sure, I'm sure she would have said the whole situation was ironic. <coughs> I have to cut this part out. Maybe I don't know. Sorry for the noise. Today at school, they announced there's an opening for the cartoonist job in the school paper. There's only one comic slot, and up now there's this kid Brian Little who's been hogging it all to himself. Brian called the comic. The co Brian had this comic called Wacky Dog, and it started off, it was actually pretty funny. But lately, Brian's been using his trip to handle his personal business, and I guess that's why they gave him the axe. Hey, Wacky Dog, say something funny. Actually, I have something serious in my t mind today. Susan Lim, if you're reading this, Brian is very sorry you kissed your best friend Rachel behind the lockers. He hopes you can find the heart you gave him. Be this very poem where you sell him. <laughs> As soon as I heard the news, I knew that a tryout wacky dog made Brian Little celebrity. Hmm, hold on. Wacky dog made Brian Little celebrity at our school, and I wanted to get in on some of the kind of fame. I had a kind of taste that I wanted. Ooh, hold on, I'm messing up real bad. And then my stomach kicks in. I wanted to get in on some of that kind of fame. 
I had a taste of what it's like to be famous at my school when I won an honorable mention in this anti-smoking contest they had. All I did was trace a picture of one of Roderick's heavy medals, but luckily no one has ever found out. Don't smoke or you look like me. The kid who won first place is named Chris Carney, and what kind of tricks ticks me off is that Chris smokes at least a pack of cigarettes a day. <laughs> me and Riley decided to team up and do a cartoon together, so after school he came over to my house and we got to work. We banged out a bunch of, co- a bunch of characters real quick, but that turned out to be the easy part. When we tried to think of some jokes, we kind of hit a wall. <sighs> but I came up with a good solution. I made a cartoon where the punchline of every strip is Zooey Mama. That way, we wouldn't get bogged down with having to write actual jokes. We could concentrate on the pictures. For the first couple of strips, I did the writings and drew the characters. I only drew the boxes around the characters. Step on a crack and break your mama's back. Yeah, right. Hey, Timmy, your mother slipped on a banana peel. And P.S. She is dead. Zooey mama. I was sorry to complain that he didn't have enough to do. So I let him write a few strips. A few of the strips. To be honest with you, they're a pretty obvious drop in quality. Once Riley started doing the writing. I've been waiting three hours to get a hamburger. Finally, I want a hamburger, please. I'm sorry, sir. We're all sold out. Zooey Mama. I eventually got sick of the Zooey Mama idea, and I pretty much let Riley take the, over the whole operation. Uh, believe it or not, Riley's drawing skills are worse than his hand writing skills. <laughs> Oops, I stuffed in a puddle. At least it's not an acid puddle. IAA, it is an acid puddle. Zooey Mama. I told Riley maybe we should come up with some new ideas, but he just wanted to keep writing Zooey Mamas. Then he packed up his comics and went home, which was fine by me. I didn't really want to be partnered with the kid who didn't doesn't draw noses anyway. After Riley left yesterday, I got to work on some comics. It came up with a character called the Crayton the Crayton the Crayton. I got a roll on. Hi, my name is Crayton. No, it isn't. Your name is Stuart Pid. Hi, I'm Stu Pid. Har, har, har. I must have banged out 20 strips, and I didn't even break a sweat. I wonder what is in this cute little box. That's not a box, it's a brick, you dumb moron. Oops, I've been trying to open it all day. Doctor, could I have a new butt? My old one is with a crack in it. Hmm. Good, the great thing about these Crane the Cranes comics is that with all the idiots running around my school, I would never run out of new material. When I got to school today, I took my comics to Mr. Ivor's office. He's the teacher who runs the school newspaper. But when I turned in my comic strips, I saw that a pile of comics from other kids who were all trying to get, trying out for the jobs. Most of them were pretty bad, so I wasn't too worried about the competition. Don't walk near your tight. <laughs> it's a threat at that point. Extreme skaters. I'm gonna do the. Here I go. I'm gonna do this jump. Yo, dude, watch out for the. T- <laughs> I remember reading that one as a kid. That's that's a refreshing one. One of the comics was called Dumb Teachers, and it was written by this kid named Bill Tritt. Bill is always in detention, so I guess he has a bone to pick with every teacher in the school, including Miss Ira. I'm not too worried about a chance about Bill's comics getting in either. There were actually one or two decent comics in the bin, but I slipped mine under a pile of paperwork on Mr. Ira's desk. Hopefully those won't turn up until I'm in high school. Today, during the morning announcements, I got the news I was hoping for. The new cartoonist for school papers, Greg Hefley. The paper came out today at lunch and everyone was reading. I really wanted to pick up a copy and see my name in print, but I decided to play it cool for a while. I sat at the end of one table, so there was plenty of room for me to start saying, I'm oh, sorry, <sighs> plenty of room for me to start signing autographs for my new fans, but no one was coming over to tell me how great my comic was. I started to get a feeling something was wrong. I read a paper and went to the bathroom to check it out. I saw my comics and I practically had a heart attack. Mr. Iroh told me I had some minor edits to my comics. I thought he just meant fixed spelling mistakes and stuff like that, but he totally butchered it. 
The comic he wrote was one of Mac's favorite ones too. In the original, Crane, Crane is taking a math test. He accidentally eats it, and then the teacher yells at him for being a moron. By the time Mr. Iowa was done with it, you could practically, you practically couldn't recognize it, it was the same as a math strip. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure I won't be getting an autograph anytime soon. Wednesday. Me and Riley were enjoying our hot chocolates in the cafeteria with the rest of the patrols today, and there was an announcement on the, on the loudspeaker. Riley Jefferson reported to Mr. Winsky's office with media. Riley went down to Winsky's office, and when Riley came back 15 minutes later, he looked pretty shaken up. Apparently, Mr. Winsky got a call from a parent who said they witnessed Riley terrorizing the kindergartens when they were supposed to be walking them home from school. Mr. Winsky was really mad about it. Riley said Mr. Winsky yelled at him for about being 10 minutes uh, and said his actions disrespected the badge. I think, you know, I think that I might just know what this is all about. Last week, Riley had to take a quiz during fourth period, so I walked the kindergartens on my own. It rained that morning, so there were a lot of worms on the sidewalk, so I decided to have some fun with the kids. So a neighborhood lady saw me and I was on what I was doing, and she yelled at me from her front porch. It's Miss Ivern, who was friends with Riley's mom, so she must have thought I was Riley because I borrowed his coat. I wasn't about to correct her either. Riley Jefferson, you're the prince is going to hear about this. Yes, ma'am. I forgot about the whole incident until today. Anyway, Mr. Ritzy told Riley he's going to have to apologize to get nervous tomorrow morning. That he asked him and he, that he's suspended from patrols for a week. I knew I should probably tell Mr. Winsky it was me who chased the kids with the worms, but I wasn't ready to set the record straight just yet. I knew if I confessed, I would lose my hot chocolate privileges, and that right there it was enough to keep me quiet for the time being. At dinner tonight, I could tell my mom was bothering me, so she came up to my room afterward to talk. I told her I was in a tough situation. I didn't know what to do. I told I got I got to give mom credit for how she handled it. She didn't try to pry it and get all the details. All she said was that I should try to do the right thing because choices that, because it's our choices that make who we are. I figured that's pretty good advice, but I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. Thursday, while well, I was up all night tossing and turning over the rally situation, but I finally made up my mind. I decided the right thing to do was just let Rally take the one for the team this time around. On the way home, I came clean to Rally and told him the whole truth about what happened. And how is me you chase the kids with the worms? I then told him there was less than we could both learn from this. I told him that I can learn to be more careful what I do in front of Miss Iron's house. And that he learned a valuable lesson, which is to be careful who you lend your coat to. To be honest with you, my message didn't seem to get through early. We were supposed to hang out after school today, but he said he was just going to go home and take a nap. I guess I couldn't really blame him because if I didn't have my hot chocolate this morning, I wouldn't have too much energy too. When I got home, my mom was waiting for me in the front door. I didn't do the right thing. Sorry, I thought I heard something again. Yeah, mom took me out to get some ice cream as a special treat. And this, the whole episode, the, and and what this whole episode has taught me is that every once in a while, it's not such a bad idea to listen to your mother. There's another announcement on the loudspeaker today, and to be honest with you, I kind of figured this one was coming. I knew it was just a matter of time before I got busted for what happened last week. When I got to Mr. Winsky's office, he was really mad. Mr. Winsky told me that an anonymous source had information which I had, which was a real culprit of the worm chasing incident, then told me I was relieved of my safety patrol duties were effective immediately. It didn't take a detective to figure out that the anonymous source was Riley. I can't believe Riley went and backstabbed me like that while I was sitting there getting chewed out by Mr. Whiskey. I was thinking I needed to remember to give my friend a lecture about loyalty. Later on today, Mr. Riley got reinstated as a patrol. And get this, he actually got a promotion, Mr. Whiskey, and said, exhibited dignity under false suspect, suspicion. I thought, it was about, uh, I thought about really letting Riley have it for ratting me out like that, but then I realized something. 
Juno officers and the safe patrols got to go to a trip on Six Flags. And they get to take one, uh, to take along one friend. I need to make sure Morelli knows I'm this guy. Like I said before, the worst part of getting kicked off the stage patrols losing your hot chocolate privileges. Every morning I go put the back door to of the cafeteria so Riley can hook me up. But either my friend has gone death or he's too busy kissing the other officer's butts to notice me at the window. In fact, now that I think about it, Riley's been totally giving me the cold shoulder lately. That's really lame because if I recall correctly, he's the one who sold me out. Even though Riley has been a total jerk lately, I tried to break the ice with him today. Anyway, that didn't even seem to work. Ever since the worm incident, Riley has been hanging out with Colin Lee every day after school, which really stinks is that Colin is supposed to be my backup friend. These guys are acting totally ridiculous. Today, Riley and Colin were wearing matching t-shirts. They just made me want to bow vomit. After dinner tonight, I saw Colin Colin. Riley and Colin walking up the hill today, chumming it up. Colin had his overnight has his overnight bag, and I knew they were going to have a sleepover at Riley's. And I thought, well, two can play at that game. The best way for me to get back at Riley was to get a new best friend of my own. But that, unfortunately, the only person who came to mind at the right moment was Fregley. Out after Fregley's with my overnight bag, so Riley could see I had my other friend and options too. When I got there, Fregley was in his front yard, sapping a kite with a stick. That's when I started to think this maybe wasn't the best idea after all. But Raleigh was in his front yard, and he was, about, and he was watching me, so I knew there was no turning back. I invited myself into Fregley's house. His mom said she was excited to see Fregley with the playmate, which was a term I was not too enthusiastic about. Me and Fregley went upstairs to his room. Fregley tried to get me to play Twister with him. So I made sure I stayed 10 feet away from him at all times. I decided that I should just pull the plug on the stupid idea and go home. But every time I looked out the window, Raleigh and Colin were still playing in Raleigh's front yard. I didn't want to leave until those guys went back inside. But things started to get out of hand when Fraley get pretty quickly. When I was looking out the window, Fraley broke into my backpack and ate the whole bag of jelly beans I had in there. But it's one of those kids who's not supposed to eat any sugar, so two minutes later he was bouncing off walls. Fairly started acting like a total maniac. He chased me around all around his upstairs. I kept thinking about he was going to come down off his sugar right, but he didn't. Eventually I locked myself in his bathroom to wait for him to come out. Around 11.30 he got, he got quiet out in the hallway. That's when Frankly set the piece of paper under the door picked it up and read, Dear Gregory, I'm very sorry I chased you with a booger on my finger. Here, I put it on this paper so you can get me back. That's the last thing I remember before I blacked out. I came to my senses a few hours later. After I woke up, I cracked the door open. I heard snoring come running from Fregley's room. So I decided to make a run for it. Mom and Dad were not happy with me get, for getting them out of bed at 2 in the morning. But at that point, I could really care less. Well, me and Riley have officially been ex-friends for about a month now. And to be honest with you, I'm better off without him. I feel like I can do whatever I want without having to worry about carrying all that dead weight around. Lately, I've been hanging out in Roderick's room after school going through his stuff. The other day, I found one of his middle school yearbooks. Roderick wrote a picture on, every, wrote on everyone's picture in his yearbook, so you can tell how he felt about the kids in his grade. Jerk, jerk. Every once in a while, I would see Roderick's old classmates around in town. I just remember to thank Roderick for making the church a lot more interesting. But the page Roderick... <clears throat> Sorry. But the page of Roderick yearbook that really is interesting is the class favorites page. That's where they put the pictures of the kids... Oh, that's where they put pictures of the kids who get most voted popular and most talented and all that. Roderick wrote on his class favorite page too, most likely to succeed. You get, oh, sorry. You know, this class favorite thing has really get, got my gears turning. If you ever get your favorite voted on the class favorites, you're practically an immortal, even if you don't live up to what you got picked for. It doesn't really matter because it's on a permanent record. 
feel so oh. feel so treat Bill Watson like he's something special though even though he's ended up dropping out of high school. So run into him at the film bar every once in a while. Would it be, uh, will that be plastic or paper, man? So here's the what I'm thinking. This school year has been kind of a bust, so if I can get voted as class favorite, I'll go down on a high note. I've been trying to think of a category I have, the, I have a shot at. Most popular and most athletic are definitely out. So I'm going to have to find something a little more in the reach. At first I thought maybe I should real, wear really nice clothes for the rest of the year so I can get best dressed. So I decided that would mean I would have to get my picture taken with Jenna Seward and she's dressed like a pilgrim. Last night I was laying in bed and it hit me. I should go for class crown. It's not like I'm known for being really funny at school or anything, but I can pull off one big prank for voting. That could do it. Today I tried to. I, th I was trying to figure out how I was going to sneak a thumbtack onto Mr. Worth's chair in history. When he said something that made me rethink my plan. Mr. Worth told us he's a dentist appointment tomorrow, so we're going to have a substitute. Substitutes are like comical. You can say what well, just you can say just about anything you want, and you can't get in trouble. Very carefully, will you please do this problem? Your mom, excuse me, your big fanny granny. Well, I hardly think that's your slap happy grandpappy. I walked into history class today, ready to execute my plan, but when I got to the door, guess who was no substitute teacher? Out of all the people in the world are sub today, it was my mom. I thought mom days of getting involved in my school were over. I used to be one of the parents who came in she used to be one of the parents who came in to help in classrooms, but all that changed when, after my mom volunteered to be a chaperone for our field trip to the zoo when I was in third grade. Mom had appreciated all sorts of materials to help kids appreciate the different exhibits, but all anyone wanted to do was watch the animals go to the bathroom. Anyway, Mom totally followed my plan to win class clown. I'm just lucky there's not a cat or right call them a small little boy because after I would be winning that one in the landslide. School paper came out today. I quit my job as a school cartoonist after cranking the credit students came out. I, I really didn't care who picked. Hmm. Didn't really care who they picked to replace me. But everyone was laughing at the comic pages at lunch so I picked a copy up to see what was so funny. When I opened up I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Zooey Mama. Of course, Mr. Iyer didn't change a single word of Riley's strip. So I was getting all the fame that was supposed to be mine. Even the teachers are kissing Riley's butt, and I almost lost my lunch when Mr. Worth dropped his chalk in history. The Zooey Mama has really gotten me worked up. Riley's getting all the credit for a comic that came with the came with that we came up together. The least he could do is put my name on the strip as co-creator. So I went up to Riley after the school and told him that he was going to have to do this. Riley said Zooey Mama was all his idea. That I didn't have anything to do with. I guess we've been talking pretty loud because the next thing you know we tracked a crowd. The kids at my school were always itching to see a fight. Me and Riley tried to walk away but those guys were, wouldn't let us go into it but they saw us throw some punches. I'd never been in a real fight before, so I didn't know how I was supposed to stand or hold my fist or anything. And you could tell Raleigh didn't know it, what he was doing either. He, was, he, he just started prancing around like a leprechaun. I was pretty sure I could take Raleigh in a fight, but the thing was that made me nervous was the fact that Raleigh takes karate. I don't know what kind of hocus pocus they teach Raleigh in karate classes, but the thing is, I, I need. But the last thing I needed was for him to lay me out right there on the black top. For Raleigh and for me and Raleigh made our move. There was a screeching sound in the school parking lot. A bunch of teenagers stopped out of their pickup trucks and they started piling out. I was happy to see everyone's attention on the teenagers instead of me and Raleigh, but all the other kids took off and the teenagers started heading our way. And then I realized that these teenagers looked awfully familiar. That's when it hit me. These were the same guys who chased me and Raleigh around on Halloween night and they finally caught up to us. Before we can make a run for it, we had our arms pinned behind our backs. 
the guys wanted to teach the lessons were taught them on Halloween. They started arguing over what they should do. To be honest with you, I was more concerned about something else. The cheese was only a few feet. Or, wait. The cheese was only a few feet from where we were standing on the black type. And it was looking nastier than ever. Big teenager went a customer and the next thing I knew, he was looking at the cheese too. I guess he gave the idea. I guess that gave him the idea. Riley got singled out first. The big kid grabbed the Riley and dragged him over to the cheese. Now I don't want to say exactly what happened next. But if Riley ever tries to run for president and someone finds out what ha these guys made him do, he won't have a chance. So I'll put it in this way. They made Riley eat the cheese. I knew they were going to make me do it too. I started to panic because I knew I wasn't going to be able to fight my way out of the situation. So I did some fast talking said. I would uh, but I'm allergic to dairy. And believe it or not, it actually worked. You're a lucky punk. I know, I know. I guess the teenagers were satisfied because they made their point. Because after they made the rally finish off the rest of the cheese, they let us go. They got back in their trucks and took off down the road. Me and Riley walked home together, and neither one of us really said anything on the way back. I thought about mentioning to Riley that maybe he could have pulled out a couple of his crowding moves back there, but something told me to haul it off that thought then for right now. At school, the teachers let us out after lunch. It took, us about five, it took about five seconds for someone to realize the cheese was missing from its spot back on the blacktop. Everyone crowded around to look at where the cheese used to be. No one believed the yeah, was actually gone. Just people started coming up with crazy theories about what happened. Someone said maybe the cheese grew legs and walked away. It took all my self-control to keep my mouth shut. And if Riley wasn't standing right there, honestly, I didn't know what I could have kept crying. A couple guys who were arguing over what happened next were the same ones who were at me and Riley the, on yesterday after never noon, and so I knew it was going to be long before someone put the two and two together and figured out that we must have something to do it. Riley started to panic, and I didn't blame him either. If the truth ever came out about the cheese disappeared, Riley would be finished. He would have to move out of state and maybe even the country. That's when I decided to speak up. I told everyone that I knew what happened to the cheese and I was being sick of it being on the blacktop. I decided to get rid of the one and for all. For a second, everyone froze and just thought people were going to start thanking me for what I did. But boy, was I wrong. I really had worded my story a little differently. Because if I threw the cheese away, guess what it meant? I meant I had the cheese touch. Friday. Well, Friday appreciated what I did for him last week. He hasn't said it. But we started hanging out after school in. So I guess that means he, me and him are back to normal. I can honestly say that so far having the cheese touch hasn't been that bad at all. It got me out of doing square dancing unit and phys, phys ed because no one wanted to partner up with me. And I've had the whole lunch table to myself today, every day. Today was the last day of school and I handed out yearbooks on the 8th period. I flipped over to the class favorite page and here's the one picture that was waiting for me. Class clown, Zooey Mama. All I can say is that if anyone wants a free yearbook, they can dig one out of the trash and can in the back of the cafeteria. You want know Raleigh? Can't have the class around. Oh, all right, care. But if ever he gets too big for his britches, I'll just remind him of the guy who ate the cheese. And then that's the end of the book. Another empty blue page. And here's the back. I'll be famous one day, but for now I'm stuck in middle school with a bunch of morons. Just don't expect me to be all Dear Diary and this and that. Well, that's the whole reading of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I hope you all enjoy. Sorry for my constant hiccups and whatnot throughout the thing. My cracky voice, but otherwise I really do help this. Hopes this helps you. Well, have a nice night, and I hope you enjoy the video.